Okay. It is June 12th, the morning of June 12th, 2016, and I'm here at Fort Whoop Up. Um, I just finished working an all night security shift, uh, but I had to run down here because we put up a teepee the other day, and this morning it's super windy. I didn't anchor the teepee, which is not a smart idea. Usually you anchor it against the wind, but I uh, took a risk thinking there wasn't going to be so much wind this weekend and uh, today we've got some really strong winds and gusts. We're going to be opening up the fort on June 21st so we've got less than a week till our soft opening and just about one week until our uh, hard opening so things are coming along and I figured this is a good occasion to kind of update show what's going on here so close these doors and just hook that over so that people see a chain when they come up they don't think the fort is open because it's not um, I'm the only one here this morning but yeah I needed to come in and anchor that teepee just to have a peace of mind for myself so it didn't come crashing down in the wind which they sometimes do it's not all the time but occasionally if you don't anchor it and you get a really strong wind it's just like a big parachute this is the uh, how the gift shop is coming along it's looking pretty good got a nice bunch of interesting hats and such old-fashioned this and that that people can buy some books um, about the history here and refreshments back there beading materials crafting materials some uh, some already completed crafts and stuff from local artisans so that's all coming along um, over in this area which would be the first area that uh, tourists come in this room here is going to be um, the kind of orientational film so we've got the uh, we've got our teepee liners all painted up and looking nice um, this big buffalo robe I'm not sure what we're gonna do with that yet they were thinking about putting it on that wall but now we got this horse over here uh, we got a bunch of taxidermied animals on loan from Lethbridge College and uh, originally we borrowed the horse because we thought I might put together a horse travois in part of the Blackfoot gallery but we also borrowed a wolf to do a dog travois and I think the wolf is going to be enough and so we're looking for somewhere to fit in this horse and he's in pretty rough shape hey this is actually the one animal on loan to us that uh, the college doesn't want back his ears are kind of chewed up you can see where he's stitched along the sides and if you remove his saddle blanket here uh, he's got a little bit of you can say he's got a little bit of a blanket sore there <laughs> no fur at all so I don't know maybe somehow we can fix him up to look like a war pony or something like that uh, in here we got a badger taxidermy badger a couple of sharp-tailed grouse back there dancing um, nice uh, murals of the old oak on and coming into my gallery here this is the wolf that I'm going to make a, a dog travois with. Um, I had two poles here that I thought I would use, but they're not quite long enough, so I have to take a drive out to my in-laws and grab some longer poles. Margie's territory, Blackfoot territory map, is coming along very good. There's the, the upper Saskatchewan basin, upper Missouri basin, two basins, the double lodge that, de that define Blackfoot territory, and she's starting to put in her her place names English and Blackfoot for all of the rivers and um, features and all of the panels that I wrote up the panels did come in but they haven't been mounted yet on the wall so that's gonna happen really quick here we've got a little nine foot teepee set up for uh, kids to have activities in it's the first time I've ever set up a teepee where I couldn't peg down into the earth and it makes it different you know you get this wrinkly incomplete effect <laughs> that I wasn't too happy with I actually pulled it down set it up twice 
but I realize we're going to have to uh, just live with live with it not being perfect because of the fact that we're not pegged in. Over here, we're going to have the Blackfoot Digital Library Station. It's already set up the computer, um, and we'll have yeah we'll have the Blackfoot Digital Library here. Got the Eagle Catcher all set up here with the Eagle now and a Coyote bait. Um, which isn't exactly how it would be done in the past, but at least it's closer than what we had. Uh, over here, I'm gonna have the food preparation area. So I've got my materials here to make a, a beam on like a makeshift shelter shade that the woman would use, uh, much like in this old archival image here. I'm gonna kind of reproduce that, that scene right here. But we had a problem, which is the, the old scene that was painted on this mural was kind of a winter snow scene. And nobody's going to be sitting outside preparing food in that kind of condition. So we brought in an artist and she's changing things and bringing out some late summer um, colors instead of the, replacing, the, uh, replacing the, uh, the winter scene. So should come across nice. This coyote is going to go over here in the buffalo scene. We're just making sure that the base is protected um, before I lay it in there and put some dirt and stuff like that over it uh, to make it make it look nice. There's the coyote. So lots of taxidermy stuff going in here. Um, yeah, we still got a lot to do, but we don't have a lot of time to do it in. So this week there's going to be some significant changes going on here, and then people will go out this door into the courtyard of the fort to step into the 1870s. We use a different door, but I'm going to show you out there. We've set up a teepee. That will be one of the first things they run into going out the door is, uh, is the teepee. Now, of course, historically, teepees would not be set up inside the courtyard of the fort. We're only doing that here because we don't want anybody sneaking off with the teepee in the middle of the night, <laughs> which people will do. In fact, if you leave a teepee sitting up uh, overnight with nobody sleeping in it. Um, Blackfoot protocol is that uh, if nobody's sleeping in it and it's unoccupied and it's left overnight, um, anybody can come and take that teepee and it's, it's fair game. They can take it away with them and use it. So to avoid the theft, we've got our teepee out here. And like I said, with the heavy winds this morning, when I got off my security shift, I was really worried that this might be toppled over, uh, which they sometimes do in the heavy winds if you don't have it anchored. And I took a risk with not anchoring it. So this was a teepee that was painted with this design. It's not a traditional design. It's just something they came up with with uh, one of the exhibits uh, that the museum did some years back, maybe 10, 12, 13 years ago. Um, but yeah, now it's anchored um, at least minimally here with a with some cross pegs. It's not the best anchoring system, um, but at least it's something. I got a little bit more peace of mind now that that it'll stay uh, in the ground even with the heavy winds. The good thing out here is that um, the fort walls themselves that surround this are a good windbreak so this teepee hasn't felt the brunt force of the winds uh, today as it would if it was up above the coulee and outside of this fort but yeah so things are coming together out here slowly but surely and um, like I said later in the week this week is a soft opening I think on Thursday we need to have most of it done and then the 21st, which is solstice, which is also the National Aboriginal Day in Canada. Um, the 21st is going to be our hard opening. So we got to be ready to receive guests. And we'll see how it goes.